Earth cool. What's your name on? Brittany. Brittany. In this video, we are going to watch the interrogation of a mother who tried to abandon her three children. Things go horribly wrong when one ends up dying and the mother tries to hide her guilt. On February 26, 2021, Brittany Gosney was convinced by her boyfriend, James Hamilton, to abandon her three children, all under the age of 10. Although it was a frigidly cold winter night, Gosney drove them to a park where she intended to leave them alone. As she was driving away, six-year-old James attempted to get back into the van, but ended up being caught and drug under the wheels. Shortly, Gosney returned to the parking lot and found James laying there, his two siblings screaming. Gosney went to the bathroom while Hamilton attempted CPR, but it was too late. They took the body home with him, and then two days later, they wrapped the body of a child with a brick and dumped him in the Ohio River. I spelled right. A and Y. Is that A and Y at the end? It is now. <laughs> All right. What's your last name? Gosney, G O S N E Y. What's your date of birth? 2 5 And your social. Tell me what's going on. What happened? I'm Detective Hoover. Okay, they called me and my partner out for anything to do with children, missing children, children that have been abused, whatever. That's what we, me and one other guy do here at the PD. Okay, so this is real important. This part is you have to be 100% honest with me with everything. Okay, because we don't have this. We're missing a six-year-old little boy, and we're trying to figure out where he's at. I got to make sure he's safe. Okay, so, you know, your cooperation goes a long, long way. Okay, but you have to be honest with me with everything, no matter what the circumstances are. Okay, so you can remove your mask if you would, if you don't care. Do you care to take off your mask? Okay. As long as you don't have COVID. I don't. Do you? No. Then we're good. Okay. So, what happened? What time did you guys go to bed last night? Well, the kids go to bed at 9. Okay. And we normally go to bed at 10. Mm-hmm. Um, last time I knew, I told them, told them all it was 9, 9 o'clock time for bed. Mm -hmm. So they all went upstairs to their rooms. And I went upstairs a little bit later to see if they were asleep. Sure. And they were all asleep. So then that's when I came down, waited a couple minutes just to see if they might have come downstairs or something. And then I went to bed. Okay. What time did you get up this morning? Um, he woke me up at 8. He woke you up at 8. Uh, did he wake you up any time before that to say that uh, James was missing? Not that I remember. I, okay. He said he tried to wake me up several times. but but you don't I'm remember. on medicine, so. What kind of medicine do you take? I take anxiety meds. Okay. I do too. <laughs> so uh, what's it called? What do you take? Um... Hydroxyzine mm -hmm. three times a day, and I take this blue pill. I don't know what the blue pill is called. Okay. At that time. This is where I need you to be honest with me. It is what it is. Okay. Do you use any other type of narcotics, drugs, illegal drugs, or anything? Do you smoke weed? Do you? No. Okay. You don't use heroin. You don't use. Uh, no, I've had family members that passed nah, away from that stuff. And okay. <laughs> Do you, know, me away, so. do you know if your uh, boyfriend does? Does he use any type of dope at all? Not that you know of. Well, you would know more than anybody. That's why I'm asking. You're not going to get him in any trouble. I just need to know if you're being honest with me. That's why I'm trying to feel you. I mean, know. I've never seen it. I mean, we smoke cigarettes. I'm not talking about that. I said drugs, illegal drugs. Uh, of course. A lot of people smoke cigarettes. A lot of people smoke weed. A lot of people use I mean, he smokes weed, but okay. that's the only thing I know. Of. Okay, that's all I know. I don't know if he does anything else. Okay, you don't need to protect him. I'm just getting I'm getting a feel for you, if you're going to be honest. I just need you to be honest with me. Honestly. Don't overread into any of my questions, okay? I promise you. Asking Gosney to be honest seems rather futile. 
If she isn't guilty, naturally, she's going to do everything she can to help them find out what happened to her son. If she's guilty, she's going to lie to save her own skin, and that won't change just because he asks. Gosney is hesitant to answer whether or not her boyfriend does drugs, so it seems like her lies won't be too hard to catch. So he wakes you up at 8 and tells you what? Or you wake up, do you wake up on your own at 8 or does he wake you up at 8? Well, he woke me up and because he went looking around first. He said he had come in there several times before mm -hmm. to try to wake me up. And he said I didn't respond to any time. So he just went outside and looked around, went through all the rooms, the closets, and all that, and he couldn't find him anywhere. So then the next thing he thought to do was just go around a couple blocks, mm -hmm. see if he might be close by. Did he walk there, or did he drive there, or what did he do for that part? Uh, he drove around. Okay. Um, but he came back and woke me up and... He was like, you know, James is calling? I was like, what? And I was like, no, I thought he was upstairs asleep. And I even woke up the brother and sister, maybe thinking they might have seen him up about moving around or something. And they said they didn't hear nothing, they didn't see him. So the baby's name is James Hutchinson? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's his date of birth? 630-14. He's a baby baby, so right. I'm kind of worried about him. Well, sure. Yeah, I'll be more than time, but huh? So tell me what kind of kid he is. Um, he's, I mean, he has ADHD. Mm -hmm. He struggles real bad in school. He struggles to pay attention. I mean, he's, otherwise than that, like in school and stuff, he's, they said he's good in school. He tries to focus. He's physically healthy, no yeah. health issues. No. Yeah. Oh, great. Good, good, good. good boy at home. Yeah. Pretty good boy. How do you guys discipline him? We like, when he does? Stand him in the corner. Those, I mean, again, there's no, I spank my kids. My kids are grown now, but I did spank my kids. There's no, nothing wrong with that. Do you spank them? Do you just ground them? Do you take stuff from them? Well, my son with the red hair, mm -hmm. he, gets, he likes playing like video games and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my the baby doesn't really know how to work the controller or stuff. He tries. Mm -hmm. But um, we um, just make them stand in the corner just for like a little bit to make them know that you know you ain't supposed to do that. Is James in school yet? Yes, he's in first grade. He's in first grade. Where does he go to school? Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks, okay. Uh when's the last time he was in school? Um well it's every Monday and Tuesday, so he was in school last Tuesday. Okay. So he goes two days a week, Mondays and Tuesdays yeah. down at Rosa Parks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you're saying other than that he's a pretty good kid, this I mean as far as like behaviorally I mean, he's a six-year-old, so I know six-year-olds. I mean, he has his little fits here and there, his tantrums. I just overlook it. Right. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's one thing you can do. Because, I mean, the other ones have the same thing, or they like to throw themselves down on the floor. Right. Or stomping or something like that. But other than that, he's a pretty good kid. What's, uh, what's the address on Crawford there? 507 Crawford. 507. And how long have you guys lived there? We just moved in there. You just, like, oh, was yesterday, a week ago? Uh, two weeks. So the beginning of the month. The beginning of the month, okay. So beginning of February. Yeah. So about four, three or four weeks, four yeah. weeks is, okay. Um, is the room that Jane sleeps in, there's a pillow in there, and there's, like, some scratches on the floor. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. It looked like maybe with a toy, maybe, or something like that. The kids play upstairs in the room. Have you ever noticed those scratches before? Do you know what I'm talking about when I say that? You do not? No, I don't. Okay. It could have been there when we moved in. Yeah, there. sure. I, I really, didn't know if you paid attention to the I didn't really look that. at the floors. Okay. Do you have mattresses for the kids or anything no, like that? we've been trying to get some. Okay. 
I've been calling around asking um, for furniture vouchers, mm -hmm. and everywhere around here is mm -hmm. not helping mm -hmm. right. right now. Right. Where do you work at? Um, I don't work. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Okay, and where does James work at? Um, with the landlord. So he does odd jobs like that, like cleaning um, up stuff? Or he does like electric. That? Oh, okay, good. That's a good trade to have. So, really good trade to have. You can make some money in that. Yeah, he's trying to work on getting his... Um, like the degree or whatever. Certificate you know. of it, yeah. And so he can actually start doing actual work work, like major work, so right. he can get more paid. Right. What time did James say that he first noticed uh, James missing, the, the six-year-old missing? Well, he I don't know what time he exactly got up, mm -hmm. but he normally... When asked questions about that night, Gosney begins to look up and to the left when she answers, which is a common indication that someone is lying. Every day normally he gets up around four, anywhere from four to five, maybe sometimes a little later, but other than that, because he's used to early morning work, mm -hmm. I normally sleep in until about eight, but, or later. I know just like a couple days ago I slept till 12. Right. Has James ever walked out, I mean, been missing before? Um, he's, he was missing once before. How long ago was that? Um, I want to say it was the first of the month, but it could have been later than that. But I know it's sometimes it's not. Right. From that house? Yes. All right. So he was missing once before from that house. And how long was he gone for? Um, I don't know when he was outside, but we found out, well, he found him at the, the you know how there's basement stairs? Mm-hmm. Well, he found him at the bottom of the basement stairs. I don't know what he was doing, but... Is there only one way to get into your basement? Yes. Yeah. That's from the outside? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is that is it a big door that you have to pull open, or what is it? Um, well, you'd have to have a key to get okay. in there, so... so you start locking why. it after that? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. probably why he doesn't right. Right. Didn't try that route. Right, right. So how long do you think he was gone then? That you just couldn't find a few minutes or um, an hour? I honestly don't have a clue. Okay. Um, and where did you meet James at Hamilton? Um, at his um, ex-wife's house. How'd that turn out? Um, well, I was with somebody else at the time, and basically we were homeless. Mm -hmm. And um, I've known him for several years. You've known James for seven years? Several. Okay. And um, I figured since we was homeless, call him up, see, hey, can we move in till we find something else, get situated or whatever. And he said, yeah, that's fine. We'll come get you guys. Mm -hmm. So we came to us and we lived there for, I want to say like two or three months or later, more, and then um, they, husband and wife had a big argument, and the, yeah. Yeah. they had a big argument or whatever, and um, he found out she was cheating on him, and a whole bunch of crazy nonsense. I didn't want to get involved, I was like, uh, okay, so I try to stay out of their business. Mm -hmm. But how long have you guys been romantically involved? For almost a year. For almost a year, mm -hmm. and then you just moved in together for the first time, or were you living? Well, in we was living. Well, once they started arguing and all that, we neither one of us had a place to live. Mm -hmm. So we went to the hotel in Dayton because mm -hmm. we was trying to find cheap hotels we can afford. Mm -hmm. So that was the cheapest one we could find. So we just. Um, went and got a, um, a motel until we was able to save up enough money to get our own place and we were just now able to get our own place. Okay. Now did you guys live next door there for a while? Uh, no, him and his ex-wife lived there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys were staying in hotels mm -hmm. here and there and then finally got this place last month or mm -hmm. beginning of the February. Mm -hmm. I got you. Uh, you only have the three children? Yes. Okay. Um, are you
you in love with with James? Okay. All right. Um, how does James discipline the children? Same thing I do. Make them stand for a couple minutes. All right. Where do you think your child is now? Any idea? I have no idea. Okay. And he's six. Mm -hmm. And his date of birth was in June. Mm -hmm. So he'll be seven here in June. Mm -hmm. I got you. The fact that a six-year-old has been missing at least once before is definitely a red flag. While it's not out of the bounds of possibility to have an innocent explanation, it's unusual enough to warrant a closer inspection for neglect at the very least. Yeah, my the middle son, they're both like a year, well, a month and some odd days and a year apart. Uh. You get the other uh, two children's names. Um, and they have both of them have the same last name as me. The seven? Yes. What's his date of birth? Seven twenty one thirteen. And the and the girl? Um. That's my little girl's name. And she is how old? She's your ID ten in October. So she's nine. What's her date of birth? Ten nineteen. 2011. And they all go to the same school. Rosa Parks? Mm -hmm. They're not really liking this COVID stuff and having to do their work on mm -hmm. the computer. They're used to their teacher trying to help them out. I try my best to help them out, but. Mm -hmm. Well, Anytime I have a question about their work, I try to contact the teacher mm -hmm. when they're when I think they're not busy because they keep changing the days of the well they go by the the initials mm -hmm. of your last name. So um mine goes Monday and Tuesday and then the other kids that have different last names goes well, they used to go Thursday and Friday. Now they put it to Wednesday, Thursday. So everybody gets three day weekend. Yeah. Right. That's and then we have remote. They well, they normally have remote learning on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And now they just switched it up to Friday. Okay. All right. So I've been a policeman for 27 years. Um, I've been assigned to detectives. And I've interviewed a lot of people, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of people over my career. Um, yeah, I was just I'm watching on the stop. news that, uh, for like last month mm -hmm. of them trying to look for this little boy. Well, I'll find him. Okay. I'm really good at my job, so I'm going to find your boy. Okay. Um, and my partner's really good at his job, so that's what we do. We won't leave here until we find this boy. I need you to be... Um, you know, if you, if you think of anything you need to talk to me about, then I need you to make sure you tell me, okay? Um, if you're protecting yourself because maybe something went awry and the boy's hurt, then I need to know that kind of stuff. If you're protecting James, your boyfriend, from something he may have done accidentally, then I need to know that. Uh, I'm going to ask you to take a polygraph exam. Do you know what that is? It's a lie detector test, okay? And... Um, because there's something going on here. Something's not right here. I've done this, like I said, I've, I've interviewed hundreds, hundreds of people over my career, and, you know, people get scared. They get themselves backed into a corner, and they don't know what to do. And my job is to help them through that, because sometimes it is what it is. If, if an act, something happens, and you parents freak out and, um, you know, don't know what to do, okay? So I, my job is to, I'm going to go talk to James here in a few minutes, and I'm sure he's going to tell me a little bit different story, okay, because that's what I get. That's what I find when people aren't telling me the whole truth about everything. Um, you can help yourself out tremendously if you know anything about anything that happened, because if I prove otherwise that you didn't tell me the whole truth, then that doesn't look good for you, okay? That's not going to be good. If you're forthcoming with me now, I can deal with whatever happened. I can deal with whatever, and we can go through that together. Okay, but I need you to be honest with me about everything because I'm going to find what happened. 
I'm good at my job, and I'm going to find what happened to this little boy. Um, so if anything else, before I walk out of here, this is your opportunity to be 100% straight with me. I suspect James, or this is, I got mad at the boy last night, and he, I spanked him, and he took off out the door, or just anything weird is fine to tell me. You're not going to tell me anything that's going to surprise me. Okay? No. I mean... Did you hurt your baby? No. Right. Do you I know... I love my kids. I would never... Okay. Do you know who hurt your baby? No. All right. Do you know your baby's whereabouts right now? Okay. Do you, do you suspect James is doing anything to your baby? No. Okay. Are you 100% sure on that one? Yeah, he loves him like a reason. Okay. The detective has stated point blank that he suspects something is going on, but he has also given her an out to confess or blame it entirely on her boyfriend. But like so many others, Gosney sticks to her story. All right. Just hang tight. You want something to drink? I need to use the bathroom. I'll let you, able to use the bathroom. You can do that. I'll let you do that. Do you want drink, uh, water or Coke or Mountain Dew? Anything to drink? Because I'm thirsty. That's why I'm asking. Right. I'm more worried about trying to find my baby. Okay. All right. Then hang tight for a few more minutes, okay? I got a polygraph guy coming in, okay? And he's going to ask you the same questions pretty much that I asked you. Okay. If you know the whereabouts of your baby. Uh, or if you know what happened to uh, James, okay? Um, you know, before you go through that process, again, I'm going to ask one more time. Is there anything you need to tell me before I walk out of this room? Because I feel like there is. I feel like there's something you're holding back from me. No, like, I about. can't remember exactly what time he woke me up. No, well, I'm not worried about that. I understand that. Or what time he was up. or what time Well, I'm a little time. confused that the baby's been missing since 4.30ish, we'll say. Okay? And we don't get the call until after 10 a.m. That's peculiar to me. You understand why? Do you see that? Because it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of hours. You're, you're missing a six-year-old or a first grader, and the police aren't called. So obviously that draws suspicion. Okay. Right. Um, you know. You're at that, I don't know what time it is. So. <laughs> I don't know, it's probably 11-ish right now. I don't know what time exactly it is. It's probably 11.30, 12 o'clock by now. Okay. I'll see last time it was nine something. Okay. Well, and then, you know, the police aren't called. The police aren't anything. Do you have a cell phone with you? Yeah. I see that. My sister's calling right now, so. It's okay. What kind of cell phone is that? Um, it's through Boost. Boost? Um, it's, I don't know what kind of phone, I don't remember what kind of phone it is. Boost Mobile? Yeah. What's the, um, what's the passcode on? Um, 7128, I think. 7128. He does all that, so you might want to double check with him. I'll just check with that. Figure out how to work it. Yeah, my partner will do better than me. He he like he does this stuff for a living, so I'll take it. Seven one two eight though. Yeah. Right. You can double check with him to make sure I'm not sure. I can't stress to you enough that I'm not I'm I'm very concerned not only for, for your boy, okay, and I'm very concerned that there's something you're not telling me. Again, I, I, I read people really well, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, I'm very concerned that you're going to let me walk out of here and not tell me something that you should have told me. Okay? Again, if I find out differently, you know, you're look, you could possibly be looking at criminal charges down the road if you're not telling me everything. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because this is serious. I'm missing a six-year-old boy. I hope he just ran off on his own. Okay, but something's not clicking with me. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Something's not clicking with me. Okay. So this family trying to see see if I'm okay and stuff like that, probably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they come so in last time you saw your baby was nine o'clock last night. Yes. And the baby's been missing since four ish, four thirty ish, whatever. And nobody's called the police since ten until ten after well, ten. we came here at nine something, I believe it was. Well, I can tell you exact time. Ten sixteen. 
I really don't pay attention to time. Okay. So was the was six year old in get in trouble last night? Yeah, he got in trouble for something. I don't remember what it was. You don't remember what it was? What was the punishment last night? Corner. Corner? Um, I'm I don't really like putting my hands on my kids. That's okay. That's fine. Some people don't. I didn't have a problem with it. <laughs> so, and I didn't, you know, spank on the butt is what I'm talking about, of course. But, uh, <clears throat> the kid said something about, uh, you guys, what'd you have for dinner last night? They had pizza rolls and chips. The kids did? Okay. They're, they're telling me that James had gotten in trouble for something and that he wasn't given pizza rolls, but he, he was given bread instead because that was his punishment. Do you remember that? No, we gave him like lunch meat sandwiches at, um, Lunchtime. And then uh, all three of them, you're saying, got pizza rolls last night? Why would the kids tell me that? Gosney's delivery is weak. She can barely give a verbal answer, which makes it easier to believe her other two children. It's my, it's my experience that the most truth you're going to get out of anybody is from a child. And both of the, you know, I got a six and a... Or a seven and eight, nine year old, or eight year old almost, or nine year old almost, that is telling me that he got in trouble, so he wasn't get, he wasn't allowed to have, he had to miss dinner, been given bread and something to drink instead. Why would they tell me that? I don't know. They had bread. They had they had bread for lunch. Okay. I don't know if they kind of got lunch and dinner confused. Okay, was was he punished by not giving any type of food at some point yesterday? Maybe not dinner, but maybe lunch. Maybe that's what they're getting confused. But they had lunch meat sandwiches, you're saying, at noon, at lunch. Yeah. All I would never make them go without any meal. I'd rather oh, I know that. I'd rather go without before them. I understand what you're saying. I'm just trying to figure out what they're talking about, what the kids are talking about. Is, is James, your boyfriend, that's who I'm talking about now, <laughs> has he ever hit you? Yeah. Put hands on you? Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen him put hands on the kids? Yeah. What was the needle that we found down at the, there was a needle found at the side door where it supposedly was unlocked or locked or something like that, but you know anything about that? So do you use needles for any of your medication? No, there's, uh, the people next door do drugs. Okay, so maybe it was from one of them, is that what you're saying? Yeah, and you ever seen? All, we always see a whole bunch of people just walking in through the, oh, yeah. cutting so, it, cutting through the Yeah, but have you ever seen James, you had any needles? Actually, your neighbor come over. Rick. Rick. Nice guy. Super nice. I think he's a nice guy. I don't know him like you do. But well, I don't know. really know him either. He's known him longer than me. I just met him when we moved in there. So, you said something about James does work, like doing electrical work for houses? Yeah. Like rentals, I would assume? Yeah. All right. Like he gets them ready. Who does he work for? 
Taylor? I just wanted to know his name is Taylor. And was Taylor just giving the keys of these? Are they all vacant, I would assume? I'm not sure. Did they go clean them out? What did they do? Do you know? I know, like, when they put people out and they get evicted and they sit people's stuff out, put it, I don't know if they sit it out, put it in the dumpster. I don't know what they do. I've never been with them on a job or any of that, so. Okay. I really don't know much. Does he have, like, keys of the house? James, does he have keys of the houses and stuff? I guess um, that he works for. I, did he ever come in with a bunch? Of, I mean, you would know. I mean, did he come in with a bunch of keys or? He always had the same key that he's had. But not some like extra keys that you no. could have. Got it. Basically, I'm waiting for my guy to come here. He's going to do the polygraph for me, and we'll just kind of go from there. Gosney is visibly uncomfortable when there is a question about her boyfriend's drug use. She isn't a good enough liar to be able to firmly deny it, but she has to know she doesn't come across as believable. At the very least, the polygraph results should be interesting. I got guys out canvassing the neighborhood, um, so we're actively looking for James. Okay. Little James is what I call him now, because I guess we got big James in there. It's so, confusing, I understand. So we're looking for James now. Don't think we're just sitting here talking to you. I got a bunch of people out doing that. I was going to say, is, it, uh, is anybody even out there yes. looking for him? Yes, 100%. Because I'm sure brother and sister is worried about the yes, little yeah. brother. Right. Right. Your daughter also said sometimes Big James doesn't get along with Little James. What would, what would you mean by that? I don't know. Does little James get any more or less trouble than the other two? They all get in right about the same. They're all close to the same age. They all yeah okay. So now I mean, my daughter, for instance, when she went to school, threatened to stab somebody. Right. I had a when she came home that day, because the teacher pulled me to the side with yeah. dismissal, and he was like, "Have you ever heard of your daughter threatening anybody at any time in your her life in school anything?" And I was like, "No." Okay. Because. I don't know where she would have got that from. Right. They said that she could have heard it from her little friends talking about knives or something. Okay. All right. I know James does like being mean to them, so. Like? Hitting them, taking their toy away. Oh, little James. Yeah, not okay. that. I got you. <laughs> How about right. I just say my son? Yeah, that'll work. Uh, all right. to James and he's telling us he's coming around. So this is the deal. Are you reading right? Can you read? I can read some words I don't or some words I could fit like big words I can't understand. Okay. I'm gonna read this to you. What you don't understand I'll explain it to you. Does that sound good? It says warning, I am a police officer. I want you to have the right to remain silent. And they say can and will be used against you in a court of law. He has the right to consult with a lawyer before, before and during any questioning and have a lawyer present while you're being questioned. That if you cannot afford a lawyer, it won't be appointed to you free before any questioning, and you can stop talking to me or any other police officer at any time during questioning. Do you understand that? Meaning that I'm not forcing you to talk to me. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with your baby. Okay. Flip that card over. Do you understand that? Okay. Sorry, I've just never been through no, that. that's all right. I need you to print your name right here saying you understand that. And then we'll date and time. You said print? Yeah. Are the kids okay? Yeah. We're out there eating food. <laughs> Junk food, sorry. That's all we got up here. Hey, it's something, huh? Yeah. Today is February 28th. Start right February, just at ED. Uh, 2 is fine. Of 21, and the time is 1:11 p.m. P.m. Yes. Thank you. All right. So James is telling a little different story. All right. So this is what I need to know. In the middle of the night last night, okay, 
you went upstairs and you got you picked James up out of his room and you went downstairs where your boyfriend was at. Okay. Tell me, I want, and I'm not going to go into everything James has told me, okay? Because I'm still looking for you to be honest with me, okay? Tell me about that. Tell me what happened after you picked him up out of the room and went downstairs. I don't remember picking him up, taking him downstairs. You don't remember anything about picking him up, taking him downstairs in the middle of the night? James is pushing this off on you. Okay, I'm going to be real up front with you about this at this point. The detective is trying to break Gosney down. If she thinks her boyfriend is turning on her, she's more likely to give information in an effort to implicate him. While it may not be the whole story, it will be something for the police to go on. Some cases have to be pieced together, tiny scraps at a time. It is tedious, but it gets results. Okay, so you need to be very smart, and honesty goes a long, long way with me, and if there's any criminal charges in the future, honesty goes a long way, okay? I'm getting a story that is totally different than what you've told me, and I don't know why James is telling me that, but that's what he's telling me. Okay, that's part of what he's telling me. Okay, he's wanting to more detail than that. Okay, but I'm not going to share that with you. I need to know what happened last night with your your boy, your six-year-old. Or this morning, early this morning. In the middle of the night. Whatever. I know he said that he had a nightmare. The six year old? Yeah, but he didn't, I didn't carry him downstairs or anything. Okay, who carried him down the steps? He walked down the steps. He walked down the steps in the middle of the night? By what time was that? Why was he uh, downstairs? Why was he awake? Uh, what was bothering him? Did he feel sick? Or he had to use the bathroom? Okay, so he's downstairs and what does he say to you? Me had a nightmare. Okay, in those words? Okay. So, me had a nightmare. What did you do? What did you, what was the next thing you did? Just cry it. Sit there and... Did he, where did he come to? The living room? No, he went in there and woke me up. In the bed? Yeah. Uh, and was James in bed with you at the time? Yeah. Uh, and then what happened? He came in there and said, Mommy, I don't know how many times he's probably mm -hmm. said my name. I'm a deep sleeper. Okay. Uh, but I was rolling over and I heard, Mommy, Mommy. At first, I thought I was just hearing things, and right. something told me, like, maybe I'm not hearing things. Mm -hmm. So I opened my eyes, and he said, Mommy, we had a nightmare. Or, Mommy, we see a shadow. I was like, what shadow? Mm -hmm. He said, I don't know, they're white. I was okay. like, he's like, do you know what it is? I said, I don't know. And he said he couldn't really sleep, couldn't tell me what he was dreaming about, or his nightmare was. He just, he was scared. And then what did he do? Or what did you do then? I just kind of comfort him. Console him? Mm-hmm. Okay, how did you do that? Just hold him and tell okay. him it's okay. Okay, and then what did he do after you were done doing that? Um... I believe we were just, I was just kept asking if he was okay. Did he sleep with you the rest of the night, or what? I told him if he wanted to go back up to his room, he could. Mm -hmm. Or if he wanted to sleep downstairs. Well, since we moved into this new house, 
it's kind of new surrounding to them all. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while they'll sleep upstairs, but then they like to sleep downstairs, I'm guessing because it's more comfortable mm -hmm. with mom downstairs. Right. They normally sleep in a living room. Well, not normally, but... Right, I got you. When they have That's a bad time. night or right. whatever the case may be, they sleep downstairs. I allow it because, I mean... I would want to be, let them feel like comfort mm -hmm. that I'm closer to them instead of all the way upstairs. So uh, I told them, wait, if you don't want to go upstairs to your room to sleep, let me go upstairs to get your the bedding because mm -hmm. we don't have mm -hmm. mattresses and stuff so he can lay down. Mm -hmm. um, so I went upstairs and grabbed his bedding because he said he was still kind of scared to Right. Even go upstairs, which I couldn't understand if you're having nightmares. Thought you seen something. Mm -hmm. So I went upstairs. I told him, look, I'll be right back. Nothing's going to happen to me. I'll be right back. I'm going to go. So you're here. downstairs in your room at this point? Yeah. Okay. So you go upstairs. So I went upstairs to grab his bay. Mm -hmm. And I told him I laid it out next to the other two because for some reason they wanted to sleep downstairs. Mm hmm um, but they get up early in the morning to go upstairs, play, stuff normal kids would do. Mm -hmm. Gosney is barely able to answer direct questions, but she can give a detailed description of what supposedly happened that night. It's been said that the most effective lie contains a grain of truth. This may have happened earlier, or Gosney may be using something that happened on a completely different night. No, they're not. They try to let me have some sleep. Yeah. And plus, they're used to getting up, going to school, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I went upstairs, grabbed his bedding, brought it back downstairs, and laid it with the other two. So he felt that I'm in the next room. With the other two? The, the kids. The two kids were already downstairs? No, they were upstairs. Okay. And somehow, I don't know how they got downstairs. But I woke up when I seen James, kept yelling, Mom, Mom, Mom. And it looked like he was scared to even use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Because he was, you know, how bullies oh, told yeah. He was holding himself, and um, he said, Mom, can you please take me to the bathroom? I was like, yeah, I'll go with you to the bathroom. I'm not going in the bathroom, but I'll stand by the bathroom door. Because mm -hmm. I don't want him to feel like I'm... Messing with them or Kids any of that. Um, well, he he used to joke around with me all the time. The the kids mm -hmm. he used to joke around all the all the time with me and say, "Mom, you're looking at my pee bird." I'm like, "Dude, I'm all I'm doing is washing it." Right. <laughs> so I told him, "Does he feel?" Because normally he can't really pee in front of me. Mm -hmm. I guess because uh, he thinks I'm standing there watching him. Right. So I'm like. Do you want me to stand in here with you or stand outside the door? He said, just stand outside the door, Mom. So I just stood outside. Well, I don't know, well, I don't know if you've been in our house yet. Mm -hmm. um, the little room that's supposed to be the laundry room, we just think got the washer and dryer in there. Mm -hmm. um, I stood right there. The door was wide open. Uh, we got that little night light that's in the bathroom. Okay. Um, that way they don't try to help them not be scared to go use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, but I told him I'll stand right here at the door. And I told him the night lights on, that way we don't wake nobody else up. And So you're saying, and what's your other boy's name? Were already downstairs. Yes. Were they on the couch or were they on the floor? They were there on the floor. Okay. So they were already downstairs. I don't know if they had the same issue. I don't okay. I don't know. They were already downstairs. Okay. Um but um he was they were all upstairs sleeping in their individual rooms. Mm hmm But sometimes the boys kinda like sleep together. I don't know, because I guess they feel more safe. Because, I mean, we've been in hotel rooms living with other people, and they're not used to each 
Right. Well, the little girls used to have her room. She's a little girl, but the boys ain't used to right. being apart. They're used to sharing a room. So when you put them to bed last night, they were all upstairs. Yes. And I even went up there. Do the two boys have different rooms? Um, do they share a room? Well, I leave their bags of clothes in the one room because. Right. They, I tell them if they want their own room because there's three bedrooms upstairs. Mm-hmm. I told them if they want their own room, then that's fine. But if you don't feel safe right. or comfortable, right. you can sleep in your brother's room. But you cannot sleep in your sister's room. So he gets done going pee. And then what? Um, we went in there. I turned color tins on. And you've already been upstairs by now and got his bedding. Yes. Okay. I what what is his bedding? Um, a blanket that lays on the floor. Mm-hmm. Another blanket to cover up with and a pillow. Okay. Um, so I went up there, came back down. I turned, because he was like, Mom, can you turn something on so we can see? And I turned the TV on that way, went waking everybody up in the house. Mm-hmm. So I turned the TV on. He asked, Mom, can you put cartoons on? I put cartoons on for him. Because they like, when they're doing their schoolwork at school, they do their work. I don't know if your kids get on YouTube and watch all these Spongebob and all that. They get on YouTube and watch Spongebob, but he wanted to, we don't have cable, cable, so mm-hmm. um, he has to watch cartoons. I was like, I'll find something, and there might be something on it this time. Mm-hmm. But I was going through the channel, found the channel. He said, that's fine, Mom. So I sat there on the couch. He was sitting on the floor on his bed next to brother and sister on the floor and uh, he was just sitting there. I asked him a couple times here and there, are you okay? Is something still bothering you? Mm -hmm. Are you still scared? Do you feel a lot better? So how long have you been asleep before you think you woke you up, brother? You could guess if you could guess. I don't know, maybe like thirty four hours. Okay. Whenever a time related question is brought up, Gosney tries to slide out of it by saying she's not good with time, but it just doesn't ring true. In this situation, any other parent would at least be making an effort to pin the time down. But Gosney seems to want to move on from the question as quickly as possible. So if you, I mean, once what I go to bed, go to bed, I go to bed at 10. Once okay. I go to bed, I'm, I'm out. So why didn't you tell me all this prior to, before when we were talking? Why didn't you tell me all this story before? Because I just asked you if you remember going upstairs originally when I came in, because that's what I'm being told. And you didn't remember any of that. Now all of a sudden you're remembering detail about him. Being I have scared. a bad problem with memory mm-hmm. issues. Um, I can't. I can't tell you. But I can't remember day to day. Okay. You're still not lying. You're really lying to me about some stuff. So, are you? Did you grow up in church or anything in the faith? Um, I remember when I was a little kid that my grandma used to take me to church all the time. Well, I suspect something accidentally happened, okay, because you you are all over the place with your stories, okay? For whatever I'm reason, just, you're scared and you're not telling me the whole truth, okay? And I understand you being scared. I know you don't know me, okay, but I'm the most honest policeman, person, that you're ever going to talk to, okay? I'm telling you, it's in your best interest to tell me the entire truth, okay? Or you're going to be in a world of hurt, I'm telling you. No matter what happened, if it was, no matter what happened, if you, by telling me the truth goes a long way. It's going to go a long, long way in this process, okay? I know that something, ha- that something either accidental or something happened to James, or you wouldn't be all over the place like this. I've done this a long time. Okay, this is all I've done for 27 years. Okay, is talk to people. 
you have to tell me what's going on and what happened. Okay, at this point, because James, your boyfriend, is telling a different story than what you're telling. Okay, you're deflecting, you are minimizing stuff, meaning that, you know, you're not, not telling me the whole truth. Well, he's breaking down. Okay, he's telling me the whole truth. Okay, so you can sit here and keep lying to me. I can't make you tell me the truth. You know that. You're going to have to take a deep breath and tell me what happened and what's going on here. Because something happened. Okay, there's nothing you're going to tell me that I've not heard a million times over my career. Okay, but I need to know the truth. Because believe it or not, I know it's an old cliche, the truth is what helps people. The truth is what sets people free. Okay, you don't want to live with what's going on here. Okay, you want to tell me the truth. Most people finally tell me, okay, this is what's going on. Okay, that's your choice, huh? Okay, but you know what happened. You know what happened. Only you know, and James knows, but only you're going to be able to get out in front of this the best you can. Okay, I have to see some remorse. Okay, I understand. Well, I have to see that. Okay, I, I've not been telling you the whole truth. I'm sorry. Remorse means I'm sorry. Okay, I have to, so you understand what I'm saying? This is what this is what happened, and this is the truth. Okay, a six-year-old just doesn't get up and walk out the door. Okay, there's more to the story than what you're telling me. Okay, I've talked to James. My partners talked to James extensively, and James is coming off of this slowly. I would suggest for you. Tell me the truth now. He may have told you more now. I don't know. I'm not, I've been in here with you. Okay? But James, is, uh, he took a deep breath, and I suggest that to you. Take a drink of your pop, take a deep breath, and just tell me what's going on here. Okay? Stuff happens in life. There's no perfect parent. There's no perfect person. I got very pissed off at my kids many, many times over my lifetime and been aggravated with them to the point where, yeah, I could yeah, literally I get, choke them out. I could aggravate with them a lot, but I wouldn't. Okay, tell me what's going on with the with the baby. Take, tell me the truth this time, the entire truth. Sorry, my insides. I understand that. Off the tart. I understand that. Okay. And maybe something did happen that you didn't mean for it to happen, but I need to know that. Okay? That's what I'm trying to get out of you. Okay, I talk to parents every day. They do stuff that they, I, I don't, I understand. Okay, you had a moment of fury. I've been furious with my children before. How many kids do you have? I have three. Same as me. Okay, and now mine are adults, two married, one engaged, but they're adults now. But there was many times that I lost my temper with them severely. Okay, and stuff that I regret doing. Okay, we all have regrets. There ain't nobody in this building that doesn't have regrets and stuff that they made mistakes. There's nobody perfect here. But I need you to be, tell me what's going on with your boy and tell me what happened truthfully. The detective is not tiptoeing around the issue. He knows she's lying and he isn't interested in listening to anything less than the truth. He's also driving home the fact that her boyfriend is giving a completely different story. And if she wants any hope of salvaging any of this, she's going to have to reveal the facts. Okay, so you just took a drink of your pop. Tell me what's going on. Sorry, I'm trying not to get my okay. You're good. anxiety to okay. calm down. Okay, just take a deep breath and just tell me what happened. Okay. Okay, the kids wasn't listening. Well, you know, kids don't listen. You've mm -hmm. probably been there a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, kids wasn't listening. I tried my best. I don't like yelling and screaming at my mm -hmm. kids. Because I feel like if you're yelling and screaming at them, they don't want to listen. Okay. So they're more scared of mm -hmm. you yelling and screaming at them than wanting to listen to mm -hmm. what you're trying to tell them. Right. Um, but anyways, we took the kids. I'm sure you did too, but we took the, we take kids as like the toys, take them away, put them up mm -hmm. until they start right. coming back to being behaved. Mm -hmm. um, they also have a lot of times lying about 
I didn't pee myself and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I, the one that's out there, the boy, mm -hmm. the son, he likes peeing on himself and sure. kind of, I'm sorry, Mom, but yes, I did. Like 20 minutes later, like, why wasn't you telling me then? Mm -hmm. But anyways, um... They were, they wasn't listening, mm -hmm. and he thought that James thought I wasn't making him Mine, listen. Mine, right. Because um, he's normally at work mm -hmm. nonstop, but um, he doesn't, he thinks they hate him because mm -hmm. they don't really listen to him right. well. Sometimes they don't even listen to me, but they're kids. Sure. Um, but we can get into all this book, okay? Tell me what happened. He told James told me to get rid of the kids. Okay. And so um, I took them for a drive to make them think I mm -hmm. want to get rid of them, but. I'm not going to get rid of my kids for anybody on this mm -hmm. planet. And he told me to get rid of them because they were not listening. He was tired of putting up with it. And I kept telling him, like, I'm not going to get rid of my kids. Like, I can take them, give you a break. Mm -hmm. And for me and them for a little mm -hmm. while, take them for a drive, whatever. But I'm not getting rid of them. They're my kids. I will not do that. Okay. And I said, if I wanted to do that, I would have gave them a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But he kept telling me, either get these kids under control or um, get rid of them or do something with them. So I tried asking family members to... So what um, happened last night? Let's fast forward to that. We went for a drive. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what road it was. Okay. It was just we were just driving around. Um, well, the kids were going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I had pulled over to this um, a little booth in Middle Town. Yeah. Okay. It's a little stall or something. Mm -hmm. A bathroom. I pulled over to the bathroom and let them all use the bathroom. While it was raining and stuff, I left the, left the door unlocked in the van mm -hmm. and told them, we'll all go in here, not all of us at once, but each one of us go in here one at a time, use the bathroom. So we went in the bathroom. Well, I couldn't go in there, but when I went to go in the bathroom, I told them, go ahead and just get in the van. Mm -hmm. Well, James had slipped and fell. Because his mm -hmm. shoes were wet, slippery, and he had hit his head. Mm -hmm. While we are closer to the truth, Gosney's story about James slipping and hitting his head is just a little too convenient. If that was what happened, why not just call 911 while you're still in the location or take him to the ER to have his head checked? And. Did it kill him? Did it kill him? Did the fall hurt him? Well, he was, I asked him if he was okay, he wouldn't answer me. So I noticed he was breathing kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe that's not normal. I've never seen him blurry that before. Well, he was breathing, I don't know how long he was breathing for, but he had fell and bust his head on the side of the van mm -hmm. and trying to get in there. and. He was breathing heavy for a couple minutes, and then he, I couldn't, I tried to do CPR. So he stopped breathing, and where's his body at? You're doing good, okay? Just tell me where his body's at, because I gotta go find him. I, for you, okay? This is called closure now, okay? Where's, where's his body at? Would you take it back home with you? No, I left it. You left it? So who's all in the car with you? All of us. James, you? 
Yes, we always know the three children as a family. So all five of you. Yes. All right. And where, what park was this, or where was this at in Middletown? Because it would make sense to put, to me, it was, did you put him in a dumpster? Did you put him, did you just let him lay right there? Was he buried? I mean, I, that's what I need to know. I didn't do nothing with him. I just let them lay in the parking lot because it was a plain parking lot. There was, I believe, like water over here or something. Mm -hmm. And there was a one little stall. And uh, I left him just lay on the ground. Okay, did James, was, did James do anything with him? Your uh, boyfriend? I mean, it doesn't make sense just to lay him right there on the ground. So well, I left him laying in there on the ground because yeah. I was going to call the ambulance, but I was right. I was scared, shook up, didn't okay. know what to do. Okay. So, so now we need to figure out where this is at. Well, he, uh, the, he, the little boy was laying on the ground. I went to the bathroom and told him, to try, you try real quick, because I couldn't hold myself. Mm -hmm. I told him, you try real quick to give him CPR. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the bathroom, I came out, he was gone. Okay. Where, what did the other two children say about all this? Um, well, they were in the back seat, so they couldn't. Okay. I'm going to give you a break here for a second, okay? Take it, relax, okay? I'm going to go out and talk to James real quick and see if we can't figure out where this is at. Okay? The break is most likely for the detective's benefit as well. It's an emotional punch in the gut to hear a mother describe the death of her child when she can't even be bothered to stay with him while CPR is attempted, and then to later dump his body in a river. Remaining professional after that is difficult. Park, but 
I seen water, so it had to have been a leak, or I don't know Ooh. what it was. Uh, now, James goes into a little bit more detail what happened to him, what happened to your son. Okay. First off, was James with you when all this happened? Your yeah. boyfriend. He was not. The, the three two, kids. The three kids and you. Yeah, well, he told me to go somewhere. To, to do what? To get rid of kids. To get rid of the kids. Okay. So the truth now is he didn't just slip and bang his head. Okay. Because you've done really good up till now. I need to know it's precisely how he died, how he passed away. So I know this is this is a hard part for you. Okay. And I know that your mom and, you know, I know you have feelings for James, but you also, you're a mom and you love your children. Okay. And I'm sure it was one of the hardest things you've I know it was the hardest thing you've ever had, you've done to one of your children. I've never looked that great in my kids ever. I know, and you went down a wrong path here, and you know that now. Okay, specifically though. He was not with me. Okay. It was just me and the three kids because he said he needed a break or I needed to do something with the kids. Okay, and you were tired of hearing him or what? I, I was tired of listening to it. Okay. So I just got up, grabbed my kids. Because that's what I think of first is to grab my kids and go. Mm -hmm. And he told me I can drive the van okay. or whatever. So he told you to take the van. Yeah, he told me whatever I wanted. I wanted to drive, I can take it. Right. Because I have my license. So I took the van and was going to the lake, park, whatever it is. Have you ever been there before? Uh, or you just, what made you go there? Because it's kind of he out has of the a, way. He has a friend, well, he used to, he no longer does his life and whatever got an argument. Um, he has a friend named Dean and Ashley that lives somewhere out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly where. Because uh, every time we went down there, that's where. He, so, he drove. I don't I don't know right. nothing. I'm a new driver. So you were kind of familiar with that area from being up at their house? Yes. Kind of, kind of not. I remember him stopping once to let one of the kids use the bathroom in his porty potty thing. Yes. And so that's why I stopped because they was like, I gotta see you, I gotta see you. And that's the only place I knew around there that had, I knew for a fact had a little bathroom. Had a porty potty Because there was no gas station, I couldn't remember no gas stations by nearby and I didn't want them to pee all over. Sure. So I stopped at the porty potter, let them, each kid use the bathroom. Gosney has basically admitted she was going to dump her three children, not put them up for adoption, or even leave them with a relative and never come back, but straight up dump them like an unwanted litter of puppies. So, James went to go get in the van. Uh, well, James didn't want to get out of the van. Right. I'm talking about the kid. Yeah. He didn't want to get out of the van. And he was forcing me, like, you gotta get rid of these fucking kids, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, dude, why should I have to get rid of my kids? Why can't you just go? Sure. So he wouldn't get out of the van and go And I told him, because he had to use the bathroom, too. I told him I wasn't going to leave him. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking about leaving him, so I kind of, like, pulled off a little bit. And James fell kind of down on his knees, got mm -hmm. back, went to go get back up, and then just dropped. Did you hit him with the van then? No. I didn't hit him with the van. Okay. I didn't run him over. I didn't do none of that. Okay. Um, so he hits the he van. He had the, the van door slides open. Mm -hmm. So he had a handle of the van. So the door is open? No, they slide back. Right. It's a minivan. Right. They slide back. He had the handle of the van, the mm -hmm. back door van, on the driver's side. And when I went to go kind of pull off, he didn't have the handle in his hand. Mm -hmm. It was kind of just like standing there. Not close, close to the van, but just kind of standing there holding the van door trying to get back in. Mm -hmm. Well, that door out of that door is messed up. Right. And it it I don't want to unlock it. Don't want to lock. So um 
I went to go pull off, and James, as I was saying, he was a walk. He fell, tried to get back up, and he fell and hit his head on the ground. And you were in the parking lot there. Yes. If you, I'm gonna explain it more. Okay. If you go in the driveway, I don't remember how to get there. If we took you up that way, could you show us where? Where he was at? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's actually a little, not a big, big glob of blood, but there's like a this much blood, mm -hmm. or maybe it might be even more, where his head had hit the concrete. Mm -hmm. And um, I rolled him over, mm -hmm. kind of try to help him back, mm -hmm. see if I can get him to come back. Mm -hmm. Well, did you know he's dead pretty soon though? At first, he was still breathing. Like I said, he took a couple like. Where was he bleeding from? Right here on the right here. Like, no, right right like he went to fall down. Is he to breathing out of his ears or his mouth? Um. And if you don't remember, I don't, it, he didn't have his mouth open. Okay. I know he had his eyes kind of like. You know how you kind of like sleep with your eyes open, yeah, like right. a tiny bit? Right. That's how he had his eyes. Okay. Um, so he was like responding, but I guess couldn't talk. Sure. Um, but he was breathing heavy. I don't know how many, I couldn't tell you how many breathing fast he was. But when I got, when I was with him, he was breathing still. And I was doing my CPR that I learned mm -hmm. how to do and try to bring him back. And I, I just, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. So after, so I did it for like five minutes, and I knew after five minutes there was no getting back. So what did you do then? Um, I drove home. You picked him up, put him in the van. Yes. Okay. I just, well, I, he thought I just drove. I mean, right. I can't do that to my kid. Right. Sure. I don't want to just throw them in there. Right. Right. Humans are complicated puzzles. Gosney has admitted to trying to abandon her children, killing James, and will later confess to dumping his body in a river. But she draws the moral line at anyone thinking she tossed his body in the car. Well, the other I've never seen a dead body before or know how it looks, it mm -hmm. was nothing. So I just kind of like, like a baby, pick him up his head and his legs and sit him in the, the like the, Oh, have you been in the van yet? Mm hmm I mean, I've seen okay. it. Okay. Well, it the has seat. the back seat. Right. And you got that empty spot yes. right here. And mm -hmm. then those two front seats. Well, I had laid him nicely, softly. I didn't just right. like, throw him in there. Cause sure. That's just disrespectful. Right. And that's my blood child. Right. But, um, he told, also, he told me not to tell you about this, but James's real dad's name is Lewis. Edward Hutchison, mm -hmm. and I can give you his date of birth. You can even call him. Okay. Uh, I don't. Well, I don't have a phone number for him, but you can talk to his ex-wife. Uh, I used to date Louis Edward Hutchison. That is to James's biological father. As he told sure. me not to tell me all that. I don't know why, but that's what he told me to tell him. But I was going to tell you guys anyway, because. You guys have the right to know if he has a dad with the same exact last name mm -hmm. as you just heard me say, Lewis Edward Hutchison, the same spelling, mm -hmm. uh, L-E-W-I-S, mm -hmm. the U in it. Um, his date of birth is... Um, James. My son, James. Oh, yeah. Uh, you want to write his name down? His dad, biological dad's name? You're talking about James. Your My son, son James. His biological father's Louis. name is Lewis, L E W I S, Edward Hutchison. Same as James's. And his birthday is 10 12, 1989. And the reason why I had left his dad. It's because he threatened to kill me in my sleep. Hmm. Okay. And I didn't, I couldn't just stick right. around to find out if that's right. really what he was going to do because he kept saying it over, I'm going to kill you in your sleep, right. I'm going to kill you in your sleep. 
So I just. How long ago did you leave Little James's dad? Two months ago. Almost How long have you and James been together? This James. Almost a year. So we've been on together almost a year. So therefore, if we. I can't remember, figure out how the, it's been a, we was, me and James is a real father, we've been together off and on for several years, like sure. we were in school, mm -hmm. right? and I've known him all my life, right. well he came down with this rare to um, seizures, just came out of nowhere, well he kept having seizures like if um, the kids were yelling too loud or something like that. He kept having seizures just randomly. Mm -hmm. Well, I told him he needed to go to the emergency room to get checked out because you don't just have seizures here and there, here and there for no reason. Right. So he went to the got it checked out, and he said it was due to stress and a whole bunch of other stuff. That he was he is known for seizures, and he was taking medication. Sure. Well, there's for a while he wanted to refuse to take his medication. And I told him, well, that's why you have the medication, so you don't keep having the seizures. I said, don't you want your son to know who his, who his dad is? Right. And he was like, yeah, so I got him finally to start taking his meds back. And um, so, therefore, his ex-wife name's Priscilla Hamilton. She goes by still. She lives at 1229 Woodside Boulevard. And this is where we all used to stay at. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where James's biological father lives. Only thing I know is Tikwa. I don't know his address, phone number, nothing. The last phone number I had, he came. So why didn't he want us to know about James's real dad? I'm going tell you. He told me to tell you that. I'm still confused. Yeah, I'm too old, but. Okay, so. Let me back up a little bit. So you put your son back in the van. You drove where? Um, back home. Back home. What did the other two children, what were they saying or thinking? Did they they were just kind of like shook up. They didn't. Okay. Where were they at whenever James, little James, fell? Um, one was coming out the bathroom, and one was just standing there. My daughter was the one just standing there, and she said, Mommy, you didn't run him over because I was scared of, like, Please don't tell me I ran him over because I would have really, 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 really felt bad. But at that point, whenever you got standing out there, just coming out of the bathroom. No, was standing out there. Was coming out the bathroom. Was coming out of the bathroom, yeah. and then you've got little James over. Yeah, here. and the door was open. But you drove away. No, we. Were, I was uh, sitting at the Porty Potter. Mm -hmm. Well. I want to go drive off. So you told me to make them seem like you're leaving them. Even if James hadn't died, what Gosney is describing is a dangerous level of emotional abuse. These are very young children, and to make them believe that they would be abandoned is unconscionable. Mm -hmm. Right. So your vehicle mom, was in motion. Well, it was in park, and then I put, I noticed his hand wasn't on the handle. Because I looked out the mirror, mm -hmm. his hand wasn't on the mirror, on the okay. on the handle, and so then I went to kind of like just pull off a little bit, just to scare him. Yeah. So, but that so you're saying that you were there basically to leave him. Yeah, because he told me to leave him. And, and and that's fine. I get that you're trying to keep Big James happy. By getting rid of your kid. Well, I was trying to tell him he needed to leave, but right, no, no, no. Like, I stay, gave look, the and all let, that. Let's stay right here. Just what we're talking about is your you go there to drop the kids off, mm -hmm. and you're going to leave and leave them there. No, I don't leave. Leave like I don't leave the 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 park. The park. Mm -hmm. um, but that. But that, I got to the end of the the entrance. Okay. And then turned back around and went back in there and got him. Okay, but little James was on the ground when you yes. got back. Yes. But whenever you left, he your had, I initial intentions were to leave them. That's why you went there to begin with. And you were going to leave them and come back to Middletown. 
is that what? No, I was going to leave them and act like I was going to leave them, but I was going to tell him that I left them, and in reality, I did. Uh huh. What were you going to do with them? I wasn't going to do anything with them, to be honest. Well, if you took them, I took them to there because he told me to take them somewhere and drop them off to get rid of them. Yes. Forever. So I talked. I, I couldn't get rid of my kids. And and I don't doubt that a bit. I don't doubt that a bit, but that's where, you know, and, and honey, you're, you've been through a lot. And well, I was raised when I was a kid and all that stuff. Right. Well, we're just, just focus on whatever we're really discussing now, okay? You're kind of getting off all over the place here. We're just trying to figure out, just hold on, exactly what you were thinking why, because from what you've said, and please correct me if I'm wrong, okay. James told you, I want the kids gone, I don't want to see them no more. Yes. So that, so. And he even told me, because I want, I told him to go upstairs. Okay. Room, okay, but okay. But listen, so, but when he, when you loaded up in the car with the kids, Mm -hmm. You left Crawford Street with all three kids. Yes. James was in that house. Yes. He wanted you to take them somewhere and never bring them back. Yes. Okay. So you're confused. You you care about James. And I also just you care about James, right? Yes. So you take off driving. Mm -hmm. Did you go kind of straight to Rush Run? Well, he told me where to go to. Okay, so he told you to take them yeah, to Rush. I didn't know what the name of sure, the sure, place but, was. but you knew what he was talking yeah. about. So you get to Rush Run, mm -hmm. and did you tell them, "Hey, hop out and pee," or the day? Well, they said at first they said I have to pee. I said, okay. okay, well, go ahead and go to the bathroom. And I figured that was did the best you time. get out of the car, or did you stay in the car? I got out. Well, no, I was in the car, and I didn't get out until I went back okay. to get Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So you're in the car. Yes. Wait, and did out. you have your seatbelt on? Yes. Did you ever take it off uh, at that point? No, I don't believe so. Okay. So all the kids get out of the van. Yes. Are both doors open? Just the driver back door. The driver's side sliding door yes. is open. So that one opens up. The two that... The two kids got out, the the ones out here. Uh -huh. They got out. Yes, James was in the back seat. And he didn't want to get out. He acted like he was asleep. Mm -hmm. So I just nicely picked him up, set him outside on the ground. So you did get out of your van, or did you stay in the van? Well, at first I stayed in the van. Okay. And then I noticed James didn't want to get out. He didn't out. want to get out. So I picked him, got out the van, unbuckled. Mm -hmm. Well, I am local then got out of the van. Sure. Then got back there and grabbed James. Did you go in through the door? The out you got out and you went in through the side door. The side back door, yes. Right. And you lifted him out. Yes. Sat him on the ground. Yes. I didn't throw him or anything. What, I just okay. Sure, out. sure. Nobody's saying you did. So once he's on the ground, what happens then? Um I went to go pull off. So did he had already used the bathroom, came back out. So he, you put him on the ground, you get back in the car, mm -hmm. and then he walks around the front of your car or the back of your car? My car was like this, and the bathroom's literally right here. Gosney keeps having to backtrack her actions, which means things probably didn't happen exactly as she's describing. It's an attempt to make herself look better, but in this case, that is pretty much impossible. Sure, okay. So he just like walks to the door. So you pull in, and your face is in the woods, no, it's the water. Okay. So, so once it's here, the water is here. All right. And then there's so the road to out that way. This is... All right, I just had it. Where the hell is it at? Here we go. It's called Russian Run Lake, I think. Yep. Go yeah, there all the time. So right, right here. Here's the water. Here's the road that you came in on. Okay. Okay, where did you say the water was again? Right here. That's water. Okay. So there's usually the porta potties right there. Is that a promoter? Yeah, kind of does. 
And then is there like a driveway going this yes. way? Yes, it actually goes yes. this way. So I was parked at the parking spot. They, they were there. So did you pull into a spot? It was like down this way, like those lines were kind of faded. Yeah, so you parked kind of down this way. It was close to the bathroom, but not close enough. So you were so you were actually nosed in. You were pointing towards yeah. the water. So you got two kids over here, and then you've got James milling about. Let's say that you right there. Okay. And you got James milling about over here, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. So where was James whenever you backed up and pulled out? Little James. Well, I wasn't all the way into the parking spot. Mm -hmm. I was just like halfway there, not sure. all the way there. Um, I went to just, well, I didn't even have to back up. I just went to go this way. So you just went to loop around? Yes. And pull? Okay. And he was, he didn't have a handle when I looked out my mirror. Mm -hmm. When I went to go pull away, I'm guessing he had the handle. Right. And, um, and then I went to go drive off, and he, of course, sure. had a handle. Sure. When I looked, he didn't have it. And uh, and then he was... So, real quick. So, here's the porta potty. There's the water. Here's the road coming in. Uh -huh. Let's say, so your part kind of like that. Okay. Yeah, with my uh, headlights this way. Towards yeah, the water. towards the water. So you and got I wasn't all the way in the parking lot. Sure. Lot. So you got a little bit of room there. Yes. So show me where James was whenever you put it um, in the drive. He was like right off the here. Like he's and tall enough he can reach over and grab a handle. But he wasn't touching the handle. No. So then which way did you pull out? Did you I go? just went like this. Okay. So there was plenty enough room to do Sure. Those. So you pulled forward, looped around to the left. Yeah. The other kids are where? By the stall. They're over by the big board box. Yes. And then at what point did you see James on the ground? I want to say when I went to, I heard the kids screaming. I don't remember. I thought it was for sure Rachel, but mm -hmm. they both could have been screaming. I don't know. Why were they screaming? Because you were leaving them? Yes. Okay. Because they knew I wasn't never just going. Sure. So, um, they were standing by the bathroom stall, whatever it is, and James was kind of standing close to them, but not that close. Mm -hmm. And as I showed you on the paper, I just went around him and didn't realize he had the handle. Did and you see him grabbing the handle? No. Okay, you're just but when I kind of like, he, I'm assuming he grabbed the handle because I kind of pulled him a little bit, not much. And he got up, and it fell back down. I guess I kind of probably made him hurt his knee on the ground or something. Mm -hmm. And he lost his balance, and um, he tried to catch his balance. He didn't get to, right. and he fell and busted his head on the ground. And you drove back to the... I didn't drive back to the house. I went back to get him. How far away did you get? Um... Just go down the road a little bit. Even if Gosney hadn't seen him grab the door, there's virtually no way that she could have missed him screaming, as any kid would do when they're being pulled by a car. Maybe she thinks it makes her look less guilty, or maybe she mentally can't handle saying these facts out loud. But either way, there are things being left out of the story. So... That's the main entrance, and that's parked a lot. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, that's the main entrance. Well, I, when I, you come out the driveway, I remember uh, turning this way. You turned left. Yeah. And then I only went, there was like this little cutoff kind of, like, 
pull off to the side of the road mm -hmm. while I went there and just turned back around and went okay. back. Okay. Did you sit there at the pull off at any length of time? No, I just Okay. So, so I when was you come like, back, he's on the ground. Yes. I okay. was like, you know what? I'm not leaving my kids. He can just get mad and leave, whatever. Right. What day did this happen? Friday. What time? I'm going to say 2, 3 o'clock. In the in afternoon? The or was it in the morning. at night? In the morning. Like, it's dark. Well, it was dark outside, yes. Yes. So but it was 2 to 3 a.m. A. M. in the morning. So yes. was it Thursday night into Friday morning, 3 a.m., or was it Friday yes. night into Saturday morning, 3 a.m.? Friday night into Saturday a.m. Okay, so it was actually Saturday morning at 3 a.m. Yes. And it was dark. Yes. Okay. I couldn't see nothing. It was raining. And? Okay. How big was the blood spot? Um, I want to say about the half the size of my purse that sits on the ground. So, make a circle with your fingers and just like, like this. The piece. Show me up like this. Like that. A little bit smaller than a basketball. Um, I want to say about a basketball. About a basketball? It could be a little bit smaller. I didn't really... What would the blood look like? Was it thick uh, and chunky? Or was it I just... I didn't really... To be honest, I really didn't pay attention to the blood. I was more worried about trying to get some back. Sure. Okay. So when you got back home with James, you're back... You with come the back kids. With the kids. Uh, how do you bring James? Do you just carry James into the house, or does James go out and get him? Uh, I carried him in. Okay. Um, Where the clothes at that you were wearing when you carried him in? Sitting on top of laundry basket. Are they dirty? Yeah. They got blood on them? Mm -hmm. What were you wearing? Um, gray Air Apostle sweatpants. Mm -hmm. And... A pink shirt. It was like a good color pink. Maybe a little bit of a white. hoodie. Um, um, was it a hoodie? Was it a sweatshirt? No, it was just a t-shirt and then I had my pink and whatever. It's a coat. A jacket? Yeah. Were you wearing no shoes? I believe so, yeah. Uh, so I got like four or five pairs of shoes. Right, I got you. So you come, you carry the boy back inside. Mm -hmm. you, have you already contacted James and told him what happened? Okay, by text or by by call? It was a text. You you sent him a text? Yes, and then he called me, told me to bring him back because he couldn't get James to listen. And James had bruises on him from him hitting him. He's never hit me. Right. Ever. But, okay. Listen. Where were the bruises at? Um, face, I want to say all over. Put her the mm -hmm. From James hitting him? Hitting your son? Okay. Does Trying to hit? punish him, basically. Does he, he hit the other me. two children? Sometimes. Looks like she's got remnants of a black eye. No, he's never hit her in the eye, but... Did you read in the face from this? Um, he, actually, yes, yeah, because he kind of like punches them, like they lie. He kind of either punches them or smacks them in the When was the last time he punched her? Because that uh, looks like she's got a black guy. I want to say like a couple of days ago. Okay. What did she do to get in trouble for that? Lying. Okay. I kept trying to tell him lying about his head. That's their, their kid base, what they do. Right. Sure. Sure. You'll eventually catch them in the, the truth later right. on down the line. You'll eventually catch them in the truth later on down the line. Gosney doesn't seem to be aware of the irony of her statement, given the current situation. Okay. So you bring the kid back, you carry the kid in, and then what happens? Where do you put the kid? Really I just lay him on the live in the the when you walk in the door that room right there on the floor. 
the front, when you walk in the front room? Yes, the front room. So the living room or the couch? Yes. You lay him. I laid him on the floor. Okay. The bare floor. Mm-hmm. And he took him upstairs. James took him upstairs. And put him in the bedroom. What time was it? I want to say like a couple minutes once I got back and carried him in. He took him upstairs and put him in the bedroom. Like in a closet where? It was on the floor. There's a window here and a window here. You put it right there on the floor. Okay, so as I go up the steps, there's two bedrooms. The straight. Keep going straight. The straight bedroom. Okay. And you just, where at on the floor? Where at in there? Right there on that, the, not this front window, but the side window. Okay. Okay. We're going to give you a few minute break and then we'll be right back. Do you need anything? Do you need another break? Do you need anything? I wish I had my anxiety meds. What, what, what are, are these called? The Drosophine. I'm going to take them three times a day. Alright. There it is. Alright, cool. Knock on the door if you need something. Alright. Okay. The truth caught up to Brittany Gosney on September 13th, 2021, when she pleaded guilty to killing her son and attempting to abandon two of her other children. Gosney was sentenced to 21 years to life in prison in Butler County Common Pleas Court. Sadly, the body of James Hutchison is yet to be found. <laughs>